Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to an update by RG Research for Monday the 8th of May and I'm recording this on Friday. My name is Trevor Neal and I am presenting to you from London. Let us start as we always do by looking at global stock markets, the major stock markets. First we're going to look at are stock markets doing well versus cash so being a right of this vertical here would be in a stronger uptrend than cash itself which is neutral of course and left of it is is weak compared to cash then we're going to look at stock markets versus each other so we'll use the MSCI world as the central point the crosshair for it and uh, then we'll look at the stock markets relative to each other so starting with this one here with the with cash in the middle we can see furthest in over to the right is still the Nasdaq it's holding still it's actually just turning a little bit to the right here we've got bunched together the European stock markets DAX, CAC, CAC and stocks and the FTSE on its own a little bit further to the left but still right of the vertical Hang Seng still continuing to flick around here with a long tail so weaken after its bounce <clears throat> but interestingly the Russell 2000 the broad market US market index is right over here in the lagging quadrant so we are right if we are concentrating on Nasdaq stocks but we're going to break that down a little bit in a moment now in this chart the crosshair is the MSCI World Index so if you like an index of all the major stock markets and then these are the major stock markets and you can see again we've got the Nasdaq outstandingly out here in the leading quadrant here and strongest uptrend bunched together again with high correlation with each other the European stock indices the Hang Seng yes coming around here FTSE already in the lagging quadrant here Russell going southwesterly not the right direction at all S&P of course being a large constituent of the the MSCI world never really gets far away from the crosshair here and then we've got the Nikkei coming up through the improving quadrant and looking like it's going to pass into the leading quadrant another way to look at all this is to look at the sectors so these are the ETF sector ETFs we've got two together over on the right hand side far over on the right hand side here we've got communications and we've got technology so in other words the old technology sector here far and outstanding to the right in fact everything else is to the left of the 100 here Com compared to the, the S&P itself the rest of the sector uh, sectors are an um, in a down in a underperformance action led by worst of all furthest to the left is the financial sectors so the banks in other words and we know that the regional banks are particularly weak but all the banking sectors are weak and some of the big banks are now dangerously threatening charts joining the highly leveraged regional banks but over here we've got tech now we'll look at the relative rotation graph it's still sticking with the weekly sampling of the FANG plus stocks generally on the right hand side of 100 100 being the S&P itself outstandingly we've got Nvidia here really benefiting from the AI boom and also Meta as well Twitter in a good direction Tesla not in a good direction Alibaba Netflix too coming more of a westerly direction but so we've really got a very quite unusual structure here where this particular strong sector is dominated by really just two stocks all of the stocks are good but there's two stocks which are outstanding now the S&P has been rebuffed by that 42,000 4200 level that we had isolated as a resistance level and a breakout of that could have taken us up above the 4300 level the resistance there from July 
we have still got intact a pattern of higher lows and so this is really a triangular shape here. We've still got the MACD looking positive, the weekly MACD looking positive. The RSI went up, there's no bearish divergence here particularly and it's come down with this bad sell-off that we've had just now. So in the background it still remains moderately bullish, in the short term it has been hit very hard. The Nasdaq on the other hand is pushing on forward. Looking at the MACD we can see that nice gap between it and its signal line there showing good strong upside momentum after we held these lows here at 10,600. Now we've got also higher lows pattern in here and we've cleared the equivalent resistance level of 12,800. We're pushing on forward. Yes, we've come down a little bit here, but not so dramatically. It does look as though it's still set to, with its eyes on this high here from July at 13,700 there. So this chart looks better than the S&P itself. Now, our friend NVIDIA moving ahead very powerfully from when we first picked it up in, in January. Uh, highlighted it here in these updates as a leader and it's shown itself to be a strong leader amongst the FANGS group which is driving of course the tech group which is driving the NASDAQ which is giving the outperformance over the, the S&P although the stocks are doing well overall compared to cash. But uh, here we are, this is a weekly chart still, powered ahead here now, so it's broken through, what, did that 190 resistance worried me slightly with these two tops in here, but it cleared that beautifully, soared away, a little bit of a consolidation, and now we're toying with the 290 level. If we can clear that, then we could be on our way up to the high of 2021 at 340. The as I say, the Bollinger Bands, the ACD looking very strong there. The RSI is strong, it's high reading, but it is losing a bit of momentum. So the pattern is weakening slightly. The good momentum from the MACD is being countered by a little, a signs of the shorter term message of the RSI, which is declining very slightly. Now there's a daily chart of NVIDIA. And here we saw that resistance, that break to the 290 level, pull back now into the consolidation zone and below the break point at 281, 282. The in indicators here, the MACD has come down, it's below its signal line and the RSI is, is down at 50% having come down from this higher reading here. So what we've got is a picture of struggle. It made the impulsive break but was rebuffed very easily by the resistance at 290 and at the moment it's holding. The background story as I've just said looking at the weekly chart is that it is still bullish but it's stalling a bit and likely to have some trouble to break through that 290 level. Now there's a weekly chart of that other stock which was doing so well in the, the FANG plus RRG chart also kicking off in, in January having broken its downtrend line powering up really strongly is Meta. Now Meta has now testing its latest resistance level and that is here at 236, 240 really. So it's broken through it and then we'll just look at the daily chart in a second but and pull back a little bit to it. But look above it here. The fall here was very dramatic, very fast. This means that there's very little resistance if we're passing through it on going up through it. So from here up to about 305, from 240 to 305, we've got a rather frictionless area in the chart if it can make this break. Now it is very, has come up a lot already, but is it possible that this could even accelerate more? in the next phase. The weekly MACD says yes, it says it's, it's very bullish, it's above its signal line and it's also the gap is strong there. On the RSI we're holding up very well here, it's not a bearish divergence but it, it's, it's not pushing further forward from this high to this high here so it's, it's very strong but extended I suppose is the correct way to put it. 
Now looking at Meta from a daily point of view, we had this results-based big gap here up to and slightly through that long-term resistance level. And then we've come back and we're starting to, are we filling the gap of it? If to fill the gap, it would be down to 220 or is it going to hold in here? Now, gap theory, the market has a natural tendency to want to fill gaps. We had the gap here the last time and then it wanted to fill it and drifted back into it, only got halfway through it and then went up. That's bullish. So the rules are the less of the gap that's filled right to the point of filling the gap, which is at 220. The outcome is bullish, but the less that's so if it doesn't even attempt to fill the gap, that's extremely bullish. But if you do fill the gap, then it's very often a strong signal that essentially the initial interpretation was a mistake and the market will reverse sharply. So we're at the very beginning of that moment now that these big gaps can be very helpful. So any steadiness from here is bullish. Even from a lower level, it's bullish down to the point of 220. Below 220, it's no longer bullish. So I would suggest that the traders might use this information. Look at the behavior next week. Look at it after non-farm payrolls. See how it's behaving. But any sign of steadiness, having not completely filled the gap, is a bullish sign and we can extend further. The MACD is holding up. We're, we're still positive in that. And the daily uh, RSI has come down with the price action here from undoing the excessive readings and any reading below 50% in such a strong uptrend is likely to indicate that we can stabilize and, and move on up again. Let's see, this is a strong market. It's difficult to buy into a strong market, but as we saw in the weekly chart, we are at a very important point where any steadiness, any break of the high but even before that with the gap fill action uh, the breaking the high of 245 would confirm it to us but we sh should be able to um, operate a little bit better than that using the gap it itself and then the area below above from 240 all the way up to 305 area is really air yeah, really blue sky for the market so it could move very fast could move very fast through there. Watch out, there's going to be action here. It, it's, off, it's very difficult to join something late, but this may be a moment to, to, that is presenting us with an opportunity, but it, it depends how it behaves in this gap. So watch out for Meta, and we still see more potential for NVIDIA. I will leave it here for this week. Thank you very much for watching. We will be with you again next week. It will be Julius here at the same time and the same place. So it's goodbye from Julius and I at RRG Research and may the trend be with you.